Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe to work for a cooler band next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Eddie Riggs from Brutal Legend, a seriously underrated game that's 10 bucks on Steam. Go get it and play it. It's one of the best written games I've ever played. The world is unique and beautiful, and the song Bread Fan is in it. It's not on Spotify, but it is in this game. That song slaps. Here's a sample. <laughs> Hey everybody, Tulak here. Really quick, turns out there's a reason that it's not on Spotify. Uh, apparently the band is pretty particular about where it gets played. So I went ahead and recorded my own version of it. It's a little bit different. Hopefully you don't notice. I'm a fan of bread, all shapes and sizes. I add sugar and yeast to, to make, make sure, sure that it rises. rises. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need Sweet Clementine, which is a guitar that can electrocute people and set them on fire. Next, we need an axe, which is another word for a guitar, but it's also a word for a stick with a small guillotine blade on each side. Finally, we need to summon a sweet ride, maybe one that we can shoot flames out of. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just want your charisma. You've gotta know how to rock. Charisma is gonna be number one. There's no such thing as a rock prodigy because rock and roll is bogus, but you're about as close as they come. Strength next, your muscles flex, your freaking sweat will save the day. Dexterity after that, a roadie knows that he wears black clothes and he hides off in the shadows of the stage. That's stealth. Follow that up with constitution, no matter how hard things get, the show must go on. Intelligence is a bit low. You're great at assembling gear, but your knowledge of the history of the world is more of a chronicling of your own rise to power. Finally, we'll dump wisdom. If you've rocked your socks off, your survival skill is going to go down. Never go hiking without socks on. Eddie is part human and part demon, but the demon power gives him wings, so I'm going to go for a fallen ASMR to give you plus two charisma and plus one strength. 60 feet of dark vision, the light cantrip for headbangers who don't have dark vision, celestial resistance to resist necrotic and radiant damage, healing hands to restore an amount of HP equal to your total level as an action. Sometimes you've got to do a little medic work if the bassist won't stop climbing the stage. It is the skeleton of an unfathomable fire demon, not a jungle gym, Jake. For your background, build your own roadie background for stealth and performance skills, as well as the smiths and tinkerers tools. Creeping around in the shadows, tuning the loots, building the big hardware, and fixing up the smaller stuff as well, that's roadie stuff. We'll kick things off as a bard because you need to have all the skills, and bards get three of them. Athletics, persuasion, and intimidation would be my picks for lifting gear, rallying troops, and scaring the heck out of hairspray riddled foes. You get bardic inspiration, letting you give your allies a d6 to add to ability checks, saving throws, or attack rolls, getting a battle cry out to get everyone moving the tour in the right direction. Probably forward. You have an amount of these equal to your charisma modifier per long rest. You get cantrips and spells. Mending lets you fix cracks in something or put two pieces of something back together in a minute for a pretty quick fix for a shattered guitar. Vicious Mockery lets you roast someone so hard they take a d4 of psychic damage and have disadvantage on their next attack roll if they fail a wisdom save of A plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier. Bards are fun. You get to make your people better and make the enemy worse. For your first level spells, Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage and pushing them back 10 feet if they fail, half as much damage and no pushing if they succeed. Some people can't handle power cords. Heroism makes a creature immune to frightening and gives them temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier each round for a minute, depending on your concentration, if you want someone else to take the spotlight. Animal friendship forces a wisdom saving throw on a beast, charming it for 24 hours or until one of your allies attacks it, though if you're friends with it, I'm guessing your crew will be nice to it as well. Feather fall reduces falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction, in case the stage dive goes off a cliff, your band is really stupid. Second level bards get Song of Rest, letting your allies recover an extra D8 of health on short rest. I'm pretty sure when you're working backstage for a rock band, you need something like Megadeth for white noise. Tinnitus is not to be trifled with. You're also a jack of all trades, meaning that any skill you're not proficient with, you can add half your proficiency bonus to anyway, helping you meet all and any unusual requests you have to. For this level spell, Long Strider increases the target's movement speed by 10 feet for an hour. It's never the most exciting spell, but there is a sprint feature in the game, and you can power slide after you use it, so that's pretty cool. Third level bards can choose a college, but you learn to rock in the same school as Bach, and that's the school called the School of Hard Knocks. In the D&D biz, we call that the College of Valor. You get combat inspiration, letting you make sure that your fans are going a little bit harder in the mosh pit by adding your inspiration die to their damage rolls or to their AC when they're thrashing or getting thrashed. 
You can also learn second level spells. Shatter turns the amps up to 11, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius sphere, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed, but it's really good for literally tearing the roof off the place since it breaks non-magical items and structures as well. You also get expertise in two skills of your choice, letting you double your proficiency bonus for checks with them. I'm going to recommend stealth at performance. Stealth because we're not investing in dexterity at any point in this build, and performance for some really nice face-melting solos. Finally, as a fallen azamar you get necrotic shroud letting you let your demon out for a minute per day for some bat-like wings an aura of fear for creatures that fail a wisdom saving throw within 10 feet of you and extra necrotic damage on one attack per round equal to your total level don't get me wrong everyone on the crew is great but there's a reason you're the head roadie it's all the murder skills fourth level bards get an ability score improvement let's round up our strength and charisma at the same time for better use of your axe and better use of your other axe the one that's an axe for this level spell pyrotechnics lets you add some pyrotechnics to the show because that's what the spell is called. You can make a firework that blinds creature in a 10 foot radius if they fail a constitution saving throw or a fog machine that spreads smoke in a 20 foot radius, heavily obscuring the area for a minute. I prefer the fog machine, but that's probably because I like melodic metal more than the faster stuff. Fifth level bards get a font of inspiration, letting you recover your inspiration die on short rests instead of long ones. I don't imagine roadies get a lot of REM cycles. The inspiration die also bumps up to a d8 and you can learn third level spells. The stow curse lets you mark an enemy for death, either giving them disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws of one type, disadvantage on their attack rolls against you, they have to make a wisdom saving throw or waste their turn, or my personal favorite, just hitting them with an extra d8 of necrotic damage every time you bring the axe down. Last for a minute, depending on your concentration, for 10 rounds of locked on extra damage. Six level bards get counter charm, letting you give your allies advantage on saves against being charmed or frightened with a performance, but that's not great. My homebrew rule is you can add your performance modifier to the checks they make against being charmed or frightened, but even then it's not good since it uses your action, effectively taking you out of combat for a round. Thankfully, Valor Bards also get extra attack at this level, letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one. Actually, that kind of makes Counter Charm worse since you're missing out on twice as much damage. At this point, we need to get the powers of Orma Godin. I'd say Warlock with a Fiend Pack is a pretty good way to make use of magical powers from metal fires at the core of the world. First thing you get is Dark One's Blessing, giving you temporary HP equal to your Charisma modifier plus your Warlock level when you drop a creature to zero HP. HP as the gods of metal give you a little fire tribute. Speaking of fire, create bonfire forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a five foot square, dealing 2d8 fire damage to those that fail. It's also a pretty great way to set the mood for a night of tunes and beers. Thunderclap forces a constitution saving throw on creatures within five feet of you, dealing 2d6 thunder damage to those that fail. You're one dude in RTS combat. Believe it or not, you might get surrounded a lot. For a bigger flamethrower, Burning Hands forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cone in front of you, dealing 3d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. This is a basic face melter, but we'll get something a little more hot later. Finally, Witch Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d12 lightning damage to a creature, and you can hold that up for a minute, re-rolling the damage every round depending on your concentration. But you can shut it down if the guitar gets a little too hot. Don't want to burn your fingers off, you know? Multiclassing a regular spellcaster like Bard with Warlock isn't too complicated. You can basically cast Warlock spells with your Bard slots and Bard spells with your Warlock slots. Just remember, Warlock slots come back on short rests. Think of it this way. You're hungover, you slam a coffee, you get some demon powers back. You full on pass out, wake up eight hours later with Sharpie on your face, you got Bard and Warlock spells back. Sorry for the multi-classing whiplash, but roadies are regularly pulled in multiple directions at once, so this is just playing to character. Seventh level Bards get fourth level spells. Compulsion forces a wisdom saving throw on all creatures that can be charmed within 30 feet of you. Failing that, you you can point them in a horizontal direction as a bonus action on your turn, forcing them to use their movement to go there. It's like how you command your troops with a big, bright, glowy light, except you can also use it to steer the crowd away from the stage. You set up those barricades for a reason. It lasts for a minute depending on your concentration, and they get to reroll the wisdom saving throw every turn, so we should really cap the charisma off as soon as possible. Maybe we do that at the 8th level of Bard, where we'll get an ability score improvement so we can cap off our charisma modifier. For this level spell, Charm Monster forces a wisdom saving throw on any creature, failing that they're chimed by you for an hour. That's not mind control, but it makes them friendly to you and gives you advantage on charisma checks you make with them, which should be pretty nuts with your charisma score being capped out and whatnot. Ninth level bards can learn fifth level spells. Skill empowerment gives a creature expertise on a skill check they're proficient with for an hour, depending on your concentration. People just sort of work better when you're there. 
10th level bard is a big one, giving you expertise with two more skills like athletics and persuasion to haul amps and recruit champs. You also get magical secrets, two spells from any list to get some weird stuff. First things first, let's get a druid plow with find greater steed. This lets you conjure an animal to ride on, either a pegasus, griffin, paraton, direwolf, rhinoceros, or saber-toothed tiger. I'm gonna go with a rhinoceros though. Why? 1. The charge ability lets you deal an extra 2 d8 bludgeoning damage if you've moved 20 feet in a straight line, and force a DC 15 strength saving throw to knock the enemy prone. Sabertooth Tigers can also knock people down with a charge, but that's DC 14, which is a little lower, that's how math works. Number 2, it's called the Druid Plow, and Druids can't turn into Paratons, Griffins, or Pegasi. No matter what you choose, it counts as a Fiend, Fey, or Celestial, so you can make a Demon Rhino straight off of an album cover. For your other spell, Elemental Weapon lets you add 1 to the attack rolls with a weapon, and an extra D4 of acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage to each of its attack rolls. Fire is the most metal, but acid would melt faces, and thunder would shatter eardrums, so it's up to you. Finally, your bardic inspiration die bumps up to a D8 here for bigger buffs on your big buddies. Back over to Warlock now for some invocations, special abilities for people who are friends with Ozzy Osbourne. Armor of Shadows lets you cast Mage Armor at will, making your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. Technically, you meet the strength requirement and have proficiency for a breastplate, but Eddie rocks jeans and a jacket, so if you're playing to character, you're rocking 13 plus your decks. Don't play to character though, just get the metal armor. If you need to justify that choice, just point out that it's literally metal armor. Eldritch Sight lets you cast Detect Magic at will to sense magical auras and what type of magic is causing them. Maybe you see some bloody thorny flowers on the ground? I don't know. We're immediately throwing one of those away at level 3 of Warlock because you can get a packed weapon from the Pact of the Blade. It's a magical weapon that you can conjure as an action, and we will take the improved Pact Weapon Invocation here. That's going to add 1 to the attack and damage rolls of the Pact Weapon, and lets you use it as a spellcasting focus. Technically, your guitar is the spell casting focus, but you can swap between them in combat combos in the game. This will let us bring that speed into D&D. You can also learn second level warlock spells. Scorching Ray comes off the fiend lock list, shooting three fire rays that deal 2d6 fire damage each. You can point them at one target or multiple, but roll separate attack rolls for each one. Just keep some ice near the stage for your flaming fingers. Fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement, and since you're not a hexblade, we've got to invest in strength to hit hard with your axe. Fun fact, if you're power building this at home, hexblade warlock would let you skip any strength investment to invest more in constitution better hp better concentration it's just a better warlock with which to gish but that's sort of the norwegian black metal vibe and you're more of a sabbath priest classic metal vibe fifth level warlocks get another invocation eldritch smite lets you use a warlock spell slot to add 4 d8 force damage to an attack with your packed weapon for that charged up unbreakable drop down attack thing it even knocks huge or smaller creatures prone giving you advantage on a follow-up attack you can also learn third level spells here like fly giving a creature a flying speed of 60 feet per round because your demon wings are sort of just for show up until this point it's a very scary show, but it's still just a show. Sixth level warlocks get Dark One's own luck, letting you add 1d10 to an ability check or saving throw once per short rest, including death saving throws because those are saving throws. The whole adventure started because you kind of died, but also didn't. For this level spell, Fireball is a real face melter, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius, dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. But you've got a capped off modifier, so make sure you're keeping your cool boots out of the face puddles on the floor. We'll finish this off with more bard levels. 11th level bards can learn 6th level spells like Find the Path, which lets you know the fastest path to a set location, even if it isn't the safest path. Think of it as a big glowing light on the horizon that also might lead you through some hostile territory. 12th level bards get an ability score improvement, letting us cap off our strength for the biggest swings with the biggest axe. Well, not actually the biggest axe, you're probably using a battle axe, which is a versatile weapon, when you could use a great axe, which is a little bit bigger. 13th level bards can learn 7th level spells, but I don't want them. Just grab Mass Suggestion to force a Wisdom saving throw on up to 12 creatures. Failing that, they're going to spend 24 hours trying to accomplish a task that isn't deliberately harmful to them. If they're your soldiers, they'll probably just go along with your orders anyway, but you could also use this to liberate those under Deviculus's Iron Grip. Our capstone is the 14th level of Bard, giving Valor Bards Battle Magic, letting you attack as a bonus action after you cast a spell with your action to fully mix in metal with your slashes, like you're the guitarist for Guns N' Roses. You also get two more magical 
magical secrets to learn two more spells. Investiture of Flame makes you immune to fire damage, resistant to cold damage, and you can deal 1d10 fire damage to creatures within 5 feet of you. While this is active, you can also shoot out 15 foot lines of fire that force dexterity saving throws on creatures, dealing 4d6 fire damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Since spells buffing you also buff your found steed, this will make your rhino an exploding fire rhino. Hell yeah! Divine Word forces a Charisma saving throw on creatures within 30 feet of you, and has different effects based on how much health they have. If they have 50 health or less, they get deafened for a minute. 40 or less, they also get blinded for 10 minutes. 30 or less, they also get stunned for an hour. 20 or less, they're just killed instantly for the ultimate face-melting solo. It even kicks Fiends, Fey, and Celestials out of the venue and back to their home plane for 24 hours or until they can make a wish spell to get back to the material plane. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you've got a bunch of support options with inspiration powered up by Valor Bard and plenty of cool spells to make your squad a little more metal. You're also dealing consistent damage with a magical weapon, extra attack, and fireball if you just want to explode people. Finally, you've got expertise and jack of all trades to get plenty done outside of combat. For weaknesses, you're pretty low on health, with somewhere around 130 by the end of things, so you could have trouble lasting on the front lines of battle. You're also low on wisdom, meaning charming, holding, and fearing spells could be an issue. Finally, you're a bit of a madman, meaning that you're multi-ability dependent, when you could just be a hexblade and then get some sweet feats like tough and great weapon master. But it doesn't matter if it's good, it only matters if it rocks. The main thing that this build does is to rock your socks off. And yeah, this is a build that's going to get those socks off your feet instantly. Shred your guitar, shred your enemies with your axe, and get the show on the road. Just make sure to take regular breaks, otherwise you might not be around for the encore. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We're making new videos every day this month. Join the Patreon for this sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.